Hi everybody, uh, well, welcome to Good Artist Steel. My name is Ian Ellis. I'm just going to um, focus on a painting called Hotel Bar Railway, which is a different painting I said I was going to focus on the last one. I said I was going to focus on gas. We'll be looking at gas, but I just found this painting, it's a later painting, about 12 years later. That's kind of maybe the colours of, of a more, a big range of colours. I thought it might be best one to start with this one. So if, if so the, after this I'll go back and have a look at gas. Um, so what I'm going to do is just look at the hopper's techniques. Well, what I mean by that is the paint is mixing techniques and then the way he applies a paint. Um, like all good painters, what you have to do before you start a painting is prepare your, your palette. Um, I'm going to do a bit of mixing and I'm going to use two kilo mixing to do this. Um, now, I'm not sure which method of mixing uh, Hopper used or which palette it actually got, but I'm using an impressionist palette. Having, having, with the knowledge that he went to Paris around there in the 1920s and they would have actually picked up, I'm sure, the, the ideas that were going on at that time. Um, the palette I've got here is cabin yellow, emerald green, Viridian green, Prussian blue. I'm using a Tarlow blue and Cerulean blue if I need to. I've got two colours here, but Tarlow blue is quite as dark as Prussian, but it's not as... Uh, it's, it, Tarlow blue is a bit more pure. Um, Prussian blue has been a bit darker, but I think it, if it had used the blue in those days, I think it would have been Prussian blue. Cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, a cobalt violet, and uh, alizarin crimson, vermilion, Burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Now these colours I've not used before uh, when we're looking at Vincent van Gogh. Um, uh, later Vincent van Gogh's, um, they, there's evidence he used these two colours. Um, and also if you look at someone like Henry Matisse, they, they'd start using a big range of colours, which were mixing up the uh, old master palette with the modern uh, impressionist palette. So you're also using black. Black comes into it, but I'm going to try and avoid using black. I think with Hopper he would have used black to really darken things, the same way Henry Matisse would use black to darken a blue. Um, but the ochres and the siennas are interesting. The, the burnt sienna is like a, a shade of orange. You can buy it in tubes already shade. So I've not got an orange on the palette, um, but I'm using this uh, sienna instead. And I've got yellow ochre, which is a shade of yellow orange um, that we can buy in the tubes. So not many, most of the shades we can buy in the tubes are browns. Uh, uh, browns being a shade of orange. Um, so, but these two killers are quite important. I mean, burnt sienna is a beautiful killer because it's very transparent, it's very hard to get that. Yellow ochre is quite commonly used by a lot of painters. In fact, yellow ochre is perhaps one of the very primary killers that started off right at the beginning of, um, of time when people first started using paint. Egyptian artists would use yellow ochre. They'd use a kind of red ochre, black and white. Now, I could use that the old master palette, which was a really ancient palette, and the painter, is, you might be familiar with, you might find that Anders Zorn uh, is using a palette in the early 20th century. And it's quite well known now on the internet. If you go around the internet, you hear people talking about Anders Zorn's palette. Uh, but the palette itself is just like a slightly changed palette that, of a, a late Titian palette. Titian's palette was a yellow ochre, a red ochre, black and white. Now, I have no red ochre. I've got burnt sienna that's quite close to it, but the red ochre was much more of a red. Um, uh, you could use that small palette to get a lot of shades in this painting and maybe bring the bright colours into it later, but I'm sticking to two colour mixing. Um, I'm assuming this is what Hopper was taught when he went to Paris, so I'm going to show basically what I think or how I think Hopper mixed all these colours. I'm going to start off with the wall. The wall here, you see these violets up here. I've got a violet on my palette, as you know, about two colour mixing. If you're using, um, if you're using, if you're identifying a colour, which is um, violet here, well, I'll be using two colours either side of it. Now, um, because it's, it looks very pure, it looks very bright, but remember that's when it's surrounded by all the rest of the colours. The yellow will be making this violet much more, uh, appear much brighter. Um, so I'm going to stick with, a, I'm, not, I'm going to go for the colours quite far apart from the violet. Either side of it, I've got the ultramarine blue, and I'm going to use the um, vermilion red with the ultramarine blue to see if I can get these colours on the wall at the back there. So, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> uh, 
and then bringing in a bit of ultramarine blue. So vermilion ultramarine blue just starts shifting it over to a violet there. I can see what it is, just put a bit of white with it. And I can see I've got this already, you've got a colour very close to the wall colour. And it looks much darker, obviously you're surrounded by the white. Uh, I've got a little image here I've already prepared. What I did, I just put some um, burnt sienna, a bit of red, and put an acrylic paint over a white ground, and then I've just transferred a drawing on top, similar to this, um, onto this. So I'm ready to, to show how the colours work with each other. It's very hard when you're doing a painting and you, you mix the colours first. It's hard to know if they're, if they're right. You need to do a little test to see if they work together within the painting. And you'll find this when you're doing it, even though you're, you're doing a, a, a lot of mixing on a palette, before you start, you'll find that most of the colours you mix won't be quite right. You'll be very, you'll be very skillful if you can get the colours spot on because it, the colours just change as soon as you put them on the painting. You, you perhaps anyone learning to paint discovers this. You start mixing the colour on your palette. It's got surrounded by different colours. You might make it too light or slightly too warm. You put it on a painting and it will change. It will appear different, totally different colour. But still, you still need to have a big range of colours on your palette because. Uh, what, what, you, what we do, we use our intuition. We have a lot of colours on the palette. Um, we see a colour's not quite right, and then we go, right, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But before, it's using uh, all your knowledge of how to mix colours, get them on the palette, then you adjust them, okay? So I've got, first of all, this colour, I can see by just putting it up against that, it looks okay. And, I, and if you look at this, well, it is a slight movement over towards blue it looks cooler so I've got a more of a red colour if I use a bit more paint and it looks a bit more red and then moving over to adding more ultramarine blue and just to get a shift between the And then using white, see what colours we've got there. It's a little bit too red, so just a bit more blue in there. Just a little bit too much, too, too blue, just bring the red back in. And I'm getting this movement, that's good. And I move it back over towards the red, a bit more white. Too much white. And I get this nice movement between the two. That's nice, a bit more white with it now. So it's a nice movement between these two colours, and I'm getting colours in between. So I'm getting a, a shade of alizarin crimson, um, a shade of, um, uh, of um, cobalt violet here. Um, I put white with it, so it's a tone. Obviously, I'm darkening it first, then I put white with it. We'll call these tones. Now, other colours in the painting I've got over, the, over here on the wall here, we've got this almost grey ochre. Now, grey ochre, way, way of getting that, we'll be using black and white. Uh, black and white with the yellow ochre. And that's the way uh, uh, someone like Anders Zorn would use. The, it's, a, it's a way he could have used for this painting. But I'm going to get this, try and get that colour using two colours. I've got the burnt sienna. And in between the ochre and the burnt sienna, you go this way, you go from the ochre, you go towards the yellow, and I've got the green, and I'm going over towards these green blues. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go really far, almost opposite. I know the complementary colour of uh, burnt sienna is ultramarine blue. If I put these two together, you see I should get a, bl uh, a, bl a black. Mm -hmm. Put the burnt sienna down with the ultramarine blue, and you can see it's mixing a lovely grey. It's not quite perfect grey, but it's pretty good black I'm getting there, and it's not too far off. If I put white with that, it might be just a bit too cool. 
So I'm getting this cool grey there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go slightly to the other side of the complementary colour. So one side of it will go towards more of a green, so I'll make that more slightly more green, more of a yellow. So it's a shade of ochre I should try, I try and get. So I'll go back, burnt centre again. This time with the cobalt blue, slightly more green in it. And I'm moving over towards, see the kind of greenness to the colour. As I'm looking at it, it goes to a little bit greenish. That's nice, that's a lovely colour that. And see the difference between that and I can try and get that ochre colour on the front here. That's, that's nice, I've got that there. And see the difference between the two, that's using ultramarine blue, it's more pure because it complementaries. Um, two complementaries make this neutral grey. Still a bit green, but I can make it more green slightly going over towards the uh, cobalt blue. It's got a little bit more green in it, so I get more green in that. So I'm getting a shade of this ochre. Quite a beautiful way of getting it, getting the colour, and I actually can use these colours to get the dark colours as well, so I can, uh, without using white. So I've got the tone of the, that's a really, what we call a dull tone of yellow ochre. I mean, it's really important if you can describe all these colours in words, everybody. I mean, go back to my colour, colour, um, perception video and you'll see me talking about um, them putting colours in into a, a lines of, of different levels of saturation. Maybe I do it with the lemon yellow and it goes down to get the rich colours and then you get the mid colours and then you get the um, dull tones. So the, the dull tones, this is a dull tone or we could call it chromatic grey. It's got a bit of yellow ochre with that and it's a very difficult colour to, to identify. <coughs> But when you get it, it's such a beautiful colour. It's just slightly going over towards the ochre. I can use that. Now, I could use this colour because it's complementary of this to get some of those colours here. So I've got the uh, this kind of purple grey. It's actually appearing on the windowsill there. And if I use this same colour with this, just shift it over. It's all dull, greyer version of this colour, which is coming in there. Oh, it's lovely. So now we've got actually these complementaries of what the ochre and the blue purples over there are going to be the complementary of that. And, uh, and I'm just using that, mixing with that colour there, which is a kind of something in between cobalt, violet, orange, ultramarine blue is a complementary of a yellow ochre. Um, so I'm just using that to get that grey purple there as well. So I get some really nice uh, combinations here. I can go back, mix my own black. I've got to know how to get a black. I don't need to use a black. So I could go for ultramarine blue to make my black oh, burnt sienna. Got myself a black there I could use. Or another complementary I could use in this, I could use the Prussian blue with the red, um, the, but the warm red. So I've got the warm red and the Prussian blue. You get this really dark colour. See that's too much blue, so I just need more red with it. And I get now, I think, a much more convincing black. More red needed. The Tarlow blue I'm using there is just giving me that really lovely deep. You see, just scraping to it, you can see the colour I'm getting there. Well, that looks much more of a black than the Prussian, the uh, burnt sienna with the ultramarine blue. That looks much heavier and opaque. I think because these, this colour is more opaque and the burnt sienna is quite transparent, and the also is the ultramarine, you're getting a really a, a black that's much more heavier. I could use to get some of these heavier blacks over the top of these colours I put down. Remember, with this painting by Hopper, like, it's very notoriously slow Hopper when it's painting. So a lot of these colours would have dried underneath and I'm doing the painting very quickly so I'm using kind of an a la prima technique, it's doing it in one session, which Hopper wouldn't have done. So he might have actually, some of these might have been glazed, glazed being a, an area being dry and then dragging a dark colour over the top within that. Anyway, I've got my wall, I've got this wall here, I've got the wall at the back, similar, I've got the black in there and what about this dull green, this dark shade, looks like a shade of green up there, do not like there's any white with it, so it's just a, a dark Shade. Now I've got the yellow ochre, if I use that say with, uh, let's have a look, say with uh, ultramarine blue or cobalt blue, should give me dark green.
Just do a little test to see which one's best. I can actually look at the, the Prussian blue if I need to, but I'm just going to look at these two. Ultramarine blue, cobalt blue with yellow ochre. See if we can get that green. That's Prussian. That's the ultramarine blue with the yellow ochre. And it's still too warm. Just keep adding more blue to it. Let's see if I get a really nice dark green. Maybe just a bit too dull. Perhaps if I use the uh, Prussian blue with the ochre. Trying to get that dark green. That looks good. But Prussian blue would have been a bit darker than using that colour. So I'm using more of the Patalo blue because it's a bit, bit darker. That looks pretty good. It looks a bit rich within that. So what could I do to darken that? I could use a little bit red, just a bit complementary colour. Same way of using the blue and the green, just slightly darken it. The complementary colour came into that just to make the darker colour. Or I could try cobalt, I could try um, cobalt blue. So cobalt blue, yellow ochre. It's already got a bit red with it. The, the ultramarine blue is slightly too dull, too far away. So I'll go a bit closer. That looks brighter than the ultramarine one. That looks pretty good actually. Um, that's a bit too intense, so I'm just using two killers again, yellow ochre with the Prussian blue, and I've got that green, I think, up there, that's nice, that's working well, the cobalt blue. Now, uh, any killers around there? I've got some of these uh, ultramarine blue, look like ultramarine blue, and also her uh, undergarment there. She's sitting there with this fantastic kind of copper colour on there. Now, Looking at that, I've got the cobalt violet here. That's kind of orange red, or, or it's a burnt sienna. You could say it's a burnt sienna, or something between a pink or an orange red colour. Some of these reds when they go um, a bit greyer, so I'm trying to identify it first. I think it's somewhere in between the burnt sienna and the violet, so I'm going to use those two colours. So I'm going to use the burnt sienna, which is like more orange than that, and moving it with the violet. Violet further away, so I'm trying to mix this shade of this colour. So a tiny bit of, not much red. I shouldn't change it too much. It's not far off the uh, the sienna colour. Ooh, that's nice. Getting that uh, a bit more white needed. And I can move it slightly to slightly cool it. A bit more violet in there and also move it towards more of a, a sienna so you get this lovely shift. I mean, like again, I mean, I'm talking about two color mixing, the, the advantages of it is that what you're seeing, I'm doing, I'm just slightly moving it. The color of mix, which is kind of more of a red, orange, a, a, shade, a tone of it. I've, and then I'm actually shifting it slightly with the violet, it's going a bit more cooler. And if you look at this in this little image there, you can see there's this movement between the two colors. So I've, I've this is kind of evidence that it has used this palette because it's easy to do this. I mean, you can still do this with both with black and white um, with these colours. You can still do that, but I think it, it's just the beauty of the colour. I mean, it could use any way of mixing because the way he actually applies the paint, the paint's quite graphic and quite dry. Um, so it could have used lots of other ways of mixing, but the two colour mixing is just uh, so easy to get those colours. As you can see, I've just got to shift them in between the two. Now, what about the chair she's sitting on? That looks to me like a a purple blue or, or ultramarine blue. Now, if it is, a, again, two color mixing, it's using two colors either side. I've got the violet, I could use the violet and green. Let's have a look, Viridian green be more blue. So if I go for the violet and green, both got blue in. And let's see if I can get a really nice ultramarine blue, a shade of it, obviously. I can't get a pure ultramarine blue, but I should be able to get a shade of it. 
Ooh, that's lovely. Yeah. Just a little bit more violet with it. It's a little bit too. Bit more white with it. Might be a bit too intense actually. Just uh, looks maybe it's a bit too intense. Look at it's grayer. So go further away. So if I'm using the violet. Could maybe use, not use the violet, use the Lizard Crimson. The Lizard Crimson and the Viridian Green. Going further away. That's got a lot of red in it, so I just need more Viridian Green. Shift it over. A bit more white. Now, you can see I've got too much green in that, within that, so I'm going to now use a bit more of the red to bring it across. Almost uh, even a bit more red. It's crazy, you see how dark this colour looks on the white? I mean, we put it against black. You can see that it looks, it's got this lovely blue about it, which you can't see when you uh, see it on this palette. That's why painting is so difficult. If you, uh, you, you, you put that colour on there, it looks really bright because it's rather by black. It looks very dull there, you know, so I think that's pretty good. I might need a bit of ultramarine with it when I put it on, but I'll use that. I've got the, so I've got the blue using Lizard Crimson and Viridian Green, uh, and it's a grey blue. Now, I could have used ultramarine blue, a bit of purple and black, but I think this again you can see get lots of shifts in colour if I want to to do that. But uh, now, any other colours? Some of the the green sh and the shutter at the back there. Uh, what about that? Um, is it ridding, Is it emerald green? Yeah, it looks like an emerald green, but it kind of looks duller. Um, and the main, um, it, it appears bright, but again, it's surrounded by a lot of dark colours. So if I use Viridian Green and Yellow Ochre, maybe that would want either side of it, because the yellow would be too strong, I think. But if I use Yellow Ochre, you get a lovely green. A little bit more blue, a little more blue-green, a bit of a white with it. Get some clean white on there. Keep everything clean. So important, says I. <laughs> But uh, also, I should be wearing some gloves here. I mean, we see my fingers going to do. Not very healthy, that. You know, health and safety, I should be wearing some uh, surgical gloves are really good to use. Keep your fingers really clean. You don't want to get all this oil paint in your skin within that. So, um, have I lightened that too much? Yeah, I have. I've just put a bit too much uh, white with that. Just a little bit more. <clears throat> Red and green, we darken it with the ochre a bit more, and again, more ochre. You get the color right, and just a bit more white. Almost there, just a little bit more white with it, just to kill it down. The white kills it slightly, so there's no need to go in. I'll just mix that up with the blue. But a bit of Prussian blue there accidentally actually makes it closer, actually, so then that, so that looks good. I've got my colour there, I've got a bit of Prussian blue with it, um, which is a bit further a bit further apart really. So I've got the, I'm getting the green with the ochre. I put a bit of green in this. Might be a good way of getting that colour would be maybe using the uh, cobalt blue and the ochre. Let's have a look, shall we? Um, I don't think so. I'll try that earlier if it was a bit too far. This colour might do it, but I think, I've done okay, I think, with that. I think the, I think the Viridian green with the ochre, tiny bit of Prussian blue has made it closer by, just by accident, by moving that, but 
Um, that's a good killer. I'm looking at keeping that. I think it's pretty spot on now. Now, um, now the ochre here, the, the, the dark ochre. Um, um, now again, ochre being the killer I wouldn't use for that. So I'm going to give one side of it is the burnt sienna. And I could use maybe the other side, the closest to that, perhaps using the brown. Now I'm getting a dark ochre there, but far too dark. But I can then just add the ochre to it. So the third colour comes into it when I've got the ochre. And I'm getting this colour, which is a little bit more sienna with it. It's a bit more sienna. A bit more white. So a bit more white with it. Just a tiny bit more green. Just calm it down a bit. So I've used burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and emerald green for this colour. That looks pretty good. For that colour, for the side of it. Um, there's a beautiful sky out, blue outside there. Um, now that looks like complementary colour of the yellow I was talking about in the previous uh, video where I was talking about Hopper's Light. The Hopper's Light being uh, a lot of the time is this yellow light, yellow light hitting something and then you've got the complementary in the sky and that's a really beautiful illustration of it. It's like complementary kind of uh, purple blue. Now I would get that purple blue, maybe uh, the one I mixed earlier. See that when I mix here, I mix the ultramarine, I mix the cobalt violet with the red and green, and ended up with a, a blue that's too dark for this blue. So I got a different one, because uh, for the chair I used a different combination. I used alizarin crimson with red and green, and this time I'm using a, a cobalt violet red and green. And if I put a bit of white with that, does it give me the sky colour? Let's have a quick look. Remember keeping everything clean, I'm going to clean my knife, make sure I don't get any dirt on it. Also I've got a, a bit of white over there, I've got a bit dirty my white. I'm just putting a bit of white with that colour. I mixed earlier, which was too strong for the chair, remember. And just more white with it. Some clean white. So easy to get things dirty. And I'm getting this lovely colour. Oh yeah, that's it. And it's really quite a grey blue. I mean, uh, it, that's gorgeous, isn't it? No, it's lovely. It really picks up the colour. I've got quite a few colours there now. I've got some of the stronger colours I've not done. I've not gone for the, the yellow at the back. I've got the red. The red in there, again, I've got a red with the ochre maybe, or red with the yellow. Let's try the red with the ochre. Uh, so I've got this colour, the red, pure red, with a bit of the ochre I've got down here. Again, it's really, you get some clean ochre in there. Really quite a lot of ochre in that. Looks so strong, that red, but when you're actually mixing it, just a bit more. And more white. Bit of white. So it's a really very rich, rich tone. I've shaded, the, it's a shade there, mixing. So it's a rich tone and it's almost there. A bit more white work, just kill it a little bit more. Tiny bit more orange, a bit more red to get it spot on. But really, look at that colour. See how dark it looks. And that white palette. Um, and you're just, just almost there. Just a little bit more red needed. Just a bit more red, a bit more white. That looks good. Okay. Now, <clears throat> then I've got the darker shade of the dark brown there. It looks really like a, again, if you look to dark red, 
You could use complementary to get the dark red or kill it either side. Um, burnt sienna with uh, blue might do it or um, lizard and crimson with a green might go, go for that. Uh, but uh, complementaries would do it. So the violet with the ochre might give you a bit, the ochre's a bit pasty, you might lose that a little bit. Um, I'm gonna have to, I think the best way of doing it with this palette would be use complementary killer to darken the red with the, with the blue. Complementary, so the opposite, I get a black, but on the way to black, I get this very dark brown, which is in there, got bits of red, we'll have to put the red, a red underneath it and then put this dark brown on top. So it's like, say so he's got a darker, a brighter red underneath there, then brought a darker colour over the top of it, which I can do within the painting. Um, now, some of these colours, these ochres, are very ochres, very light ochres. I've got the yellow and the ochre together. Again, uh, using white and just loads of white, loads of yellow. That's cadmium yellow. That looks pretty good. Um, perhaps a little bit of ochre there with it in the underneath between the sides. So it's really massive contrast tonally in this painting. There's bits of pure yellow in, in there as well. You see bits of yellow appear, so it's like you put one colour down, then put another colour over the top and changed it. Anyway, let's do a bit of painting with the colours I've got. And just looking at the purples. Dragging over the paint, so the, the colour underneath comes through, it's quite dry paint I'm using. I've been a bit heavy with that paint, I put it on too heavily, very quickly, speeding up. But <laughs> well, okay, you can see, uh, just take it, get it, that's it, just taking it away. So the colour underneath comes back through that, so um, not using so much paint, keep it dry. Going towards the blue, again I can just take some paint off my brush. Let's just start building up dry paint. Using the, that, this sienna colour underneath come through it. And then get the side of that, clean my brush. Bit of zest in that, just to clean the brush to make sure it's super clean. And I've got the ochre killer for the curtains, dragging out around the hand. I've got the green I've mixed earlier, the sienna in the Again, um, go for the blue in the sky. Quite thick paint that, I can just make sure it takes over the it's a nice contrast to bring in. Oh, it looks great, doesn't it? That's beautiful. And, uh, um, and then the yellow clean brush, super clean. Any yellows? And getting that light against that blue coming down. These little, this is always good to these little paintings because it's like a little test to see if you've got the, the right colors. So it's good to do it small first. I've got some blacks to bring into that. I can use a different brush for my black. Bits of white I've not used yet, just bits of white coming in. With the lights catching the side of the wall. I've got the darker colour at the back where it looks a bit more of a um, 
the wall itself has been a bit ochreish. Not make that too, not make that too uh, heavy. Then bring in the dark colour over the top. If you notice when, when Hopper's painting, there's there's no uh, modelling. He's not drawing the paint in, in the sense that he don't see anything modelling. He's drawing round things. Like you found in Van Gogh's chair, what he was doing, it was a kind of like the, the wicker chair. Remember, he kind of drew round it. And you've, you don't see that in Hopper. It's kind of flat planes of colour. Um, so I, I can imagine sometimes to get some of these, the flatness, it's very hard sometimes to get flatness. You might even use some like a stencil or something to get some of these sharp edges because they're hard to get. And uh, I'm just going to bring in a bit more colour now on the, the red and the black together. I'm just putting down the blacks now to help bring out the colours on the back. Going a bit heavy with the paint there. And also around the back there's a more of a... I'm use a burnt sienna with that to get this... Uh, with the grey I mixed earlier to get the background grey very quickly. Bring on the grey back. And then bringing in the really dark black again to get the darker colours on that. And also there's a really powerful black around the window of the green. Now put the green in first. Really love a bit of colour coming into this now, I think. Just felt set everything off nicely. This bit of green, very important part of the painting, that. And the black around that really helps bring that as well, bring that out. Also the black on the side of the set seat, the, the chair there. And the, the red underneath. Again, I can go for the red. And bringing in the really dark colour over the top of that. So there's a lot of dark colours in there. There's a lot of dark colours in the painting. Making everything come out brighter, so... And then bring in this strong red. A bit more red with it. And then there's a the carpet, it's a bit green, a bit more yellow, so I can put a bit more yellow with the green I've got there. Make sure the colours are clean, a bit more yellow in the green. You've seen the carpet just around the legs. A bit more yellow than I'm using. Very important, this little bit of green, just set some of the reds off. And then some very light colours. Just bring in some very light colours in that. So around the head, very light, very similar colour. Just some white on the top of his head. And then there's a yellow, a very tint of yellow, quite pure yellow, on the side of the curtain. Coming up, there it goes, it mixes with the colour I've got down here. There's some more yellow in there. Over the top of these colours here. And 
and uh, bring it back to the blue. The blue of the chair that Bit more white with it, this colour, just to make it come a bit lighter in some areas. And then we've got the colours of her top. Get some white in there. Did the little studies like this, little tiny ones. You can see they can work out all right on their own right. You know, you've got the colours there. And then there's the white of the wall. Looks quite like a grey version of this colour, so I'm just going to put a lot of white with that colour. It's like a light, like the colour from the outside. Again, too heavy. I'm just going to put down the letting the colour underneath come through a little bit, or just taking off a bit of paint. Now, if I was doing a big painting of this, I would obviously be using a dry brush and try and avoid taking paint off like that because it kind of smudges the paint a bit too much, but it looks all right. I mean, uh, I'm starting to, things are starting to come together. I've got the violet as well at the back. A little bit more violets come in against it. It's more of a red actually against his arm there and in the back of his arm. And he's got bits of uh, orange on his face. We've got a bit more ochre. He's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. He's kind of doing now because I've got little bits of colour on my palette. His hand, he's got a bit of colour on it. Very light ochres. I'm putting a bit of orange with the ochre here to get his skin colour. Just tiny lots of paint. A bit lighter around him, a bit more ochre. And this grey, a mix earlier, come back to the grey around him. And then bang back to the black, the edge of the black, there's the edge of the floor, there's the black coming in. And then I've got some of these browns I can bring in to the mirror. And then there's a little, almost like an abstract painting in the mirror, so it's lovely. Um, a bit more, I'm just putting bits of this colour with that, making this a bit brighter. Got more of an orange in there, which is too strong. That's it, just got that too strong there. And too light, too much white in there, just rub in, start, go back to that, look at again, a bit more brown. And this deep blue I've got in the, in the frame, coming down. And the darkness of the brown mahogany mirror, I can get with the complementaries and red again. And then go back to the violet again, the violet blue I got earlier to around this head. And also bits of colour on her her colours are well, just light ochres. And go back to the ochre mix for the curtains actually. It's kind of linking up the painting. You've got the ochres in her and the ochres in the curtains are kind of like
and the ochre, like ochres on her legs. Much more white. Looking for more white. And her legs as well. Picking up a light colour. <laughs> and then it's a blue, the purple in the background and through the through the through the window, lots of purple colour coming through. There's a white in the curtains there, just round the edges of that. And um, more of an or light orange for the for the roof. And then there's another ochre in the other side of the whole painting here. That's lovely, just bringing that light down. And I can use this, it breaks into the paint, almost the same colour as breaking into that. And there's a shadow I've missed there. A few greys. Bit of red catching the top of the drawer as well. Lots of little grey things in there. Go back to my greys I had earlier. And then some more blacks around the chair. Underneath this. And just bring it up. And I can just do a little bit of drawing. I can even use a black just to bright darken some things a little bit more. And I've got bits of blue on him. Now his blue looks the same blue as the, as the top. Go back to brown. The violet there against that. And you're starting to see the colours coming together. I'll just take away the tape. And you'll see my little colour city. And look at doing these little colour cities because they can just uh, any mistakes. I think the ground I put down perhaps a little bit too of an ochre, so I perhaps bring more of a lighter ground if I do the big painting of it. It makes a difference when they put the tape off. It's a little study. Not quite finished it, but I think I did enough just to show you how the colours work together within that. Anyway, that's a long video. I hope you enjoyed that. I mean, I just what well, I thought it was important to show you uh, the colour mixing and how how I organise a palette, and then I start changing the colours a little bit. There's a little bit of that. Forget some of the colours I've seen that, and you'll find the palette starts getting very messy. It should do when you're doing a painting. You start off with a lot of colours and try and try and put them together, see if they work. It's like a little study, see if we've got the right colour combinations. And the only way is to test it, a little small scale study like that. So they're very important things and they're beautiful little things in their own right. And I'm obviously lots of detail missing. But I uh, hope you enjoyed that and please subscribe if you've not already subscribed and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Bye.